رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم والصلاة والسلام على احل بیته الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المظلومین واللعن اللہ على عدائی مجمعین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ in order that we may be able to do some important Masails of Maha Mubarak, we will keep those Masails of the nine things that are haram, that we are quite familiar with during the fasting day. For now, if we get time, inshallah, we will do. Today we want to go in straight into those actions that are makru in uh, fasting, and thereafter, we want to discuss a few masails of fasting when traveling. So we will look at these today, inshallah, and then let us see if we get some more time next week, then we will uh, even continue with uh, the Yawm Shak and the other aspects of the details of the uh, nine things, inshallah. As for <coughs> makru things for a fasting person, First is putting medication in the eyes and applying collyrium in a way that the taste or smell of it reaches the throat. Certain eye ointments or even collyrium is so strong that there is a sense of smell or taste that comes to the throat. Those things are uh, makru. Doing anything that causes weakness such as giving blood Giving blood is mustaab. There, there is no problem giving blood to anyone. However, if during fasting somebody feels that by giving blood he will become weak, then it becomes makru. Putting medication in the nose, similar to the eyes, if it, one does not know that it will reach the throat, and if one knows that it will reach the throat, then it is not allowed then it is not allowed. If I know that by putting this medication in the nose, it will reach my throat, then it is not allowed. Smelling aromatic plants. For women to sit in water using a suppository, making wet the clothes one is wearing, it's too hot, so I just pour water on myself and make my clothes wet. Having teeth extracted or doing anything that causes blood to come out of the mouth, brushing the teeth with a wet piece of wood, putting water on any other f or any other fluid in the mouth without due cause, immersing the entire head in water. Now, when it comes to immersing the entire head of, in water, I'll just uh, divert for a moment. As we have always popularly known by the Maharajas before that putting our, immersing our entire head in water during fasting breaks our fast. According to Ayatollah Sistani, this, uh, Sistani, this is a highly makru act. It does not break the fast. It is highly makru, and if one uh, dives into a pool of water or the sea to do ghusl, his ghusl is also valid, and so is his fast. There is no problem. It is also disapproved for someone to kiss his wife or to do something that arouses him without intending to ejaculate. Courting is allowed for, uh, for uh, oneself who has his legal spouse. There is no problem if there is no intention of ejaculation. However, it is makru even to do anything of that sort. Now, we go to straight to the fasting by a traveler. A traveler for, now this is a, the principal masail. It says, a traveler for whom it is wajib to shorten his four rakat salat into two should not fast. So those who recite kasar cannot fast. This is the, the principle of it. However, a traveler who offers full salat like a person who is a traveler by profession, Kasir Ustafar, a courier, a pilot, uh, whatever the profession may be, uh, the profession is not limited. 
anything that requires one to travel all the time. A salesman maybe also travels wide distances or goes on a journey for a haram purpose. During Mahi Ramadan, if you are do, taking, uh, undertaking a journey for haram purpose, then one should fast whilst traveling. Now, a person is considered traveler. Who is a traveler? We have to now define traveler. Traveler is one when his outward and inward journey is not less than eight farsakh, which is 28 miles return. A farsakh in Sharia is about five and a half kilometers or three and a half miles. Now what this means is from the Hadde Tarakhus, from the boundary, when we go out, it is such that we go to such a point that by going out and coming back, that is more than 28 miles return journey, so 14 miles one way from the boundary. So it says, if a person does not know, now, this is the main masala. Now, let me clarify this, that whilst when we go for the, uh, to the five, four places where we have an option to recite uh, full salat, this masala does not apply in the sense that that is an option of full salat. So even in Makkah or Medina, we have to, be 10 days and more to be able to fast during Mahi Ramadan, otherwise we cannot fast. That masala is only for salat, so we should not be doing kiyas in that matter. This is, this is a masala for a general play, traveling thing. So if we are going out somewhere, I'm going to be there for 10 days and more, Mukim at one place, then I'm not a traveler to that place and I will recite full salat and I can also fast. For those who care, who go for a few days, less than 10, then it is, you, you will recite kasar and you will not be able to fast during those days if it is in Mahi Ramadan. If there are any questions, please stop me. We will discuss, inshallah. There is no problem. Ji. That is an option, yes. You cannot fast, no. If a person does not know of this masala, that the fast of a traveler is invalid and observes fast whilst journeying and learns about the rule during the day, I went out somewhere and I was fasting. I didn't know of the masala. And I came to know during the day before Maghrib, the fast becomes batil and I will have to uh, do the qadha for it. But if I learn about it until Maghrib, Maghrib and beyond, now my fast has ended and I now learn in the night that, oh, this uh, I cannot fast, then in that case, that particular day's fast is valid and there is no problem for it. There is no qadha for it. This is a masala which is there, so I will say it, but uh, if a person forgets that he is a traveler or forgets that the fast of a, a traveler is void and observes fast while journeying, his fast is invalid. I can't forget to uh, be a traveler. Fasting, if a fasting person travels after Zohar, the, he should, as a precaution, complete his fast. So, we generally want to protect our fast and not want to put it into kava. So, but here the masala says that if I travel after Zohar time, I leave my city where I, am, I reside after Zohar, as a precaution, I make, must complete the fast of that day and that fast is valid and there is no qadha or anything regarding that day. That day is a full, complete fasting day. <laughs> if a fasting person travels before Zohar and had an intention from the previous night to do so, I had an intention that tomorrow morning, inshallah ta'ala, I will be going to Tampa, for example, or Miami, or New York, or wherever. And 
as a precaution he cannot fast on that day even if he had no intention to travel the previous night something came up in the morning and i had to travel even then there is you cannot fast if it is before zohar <coughs> but in any case you cannot break the fast when you are still within your boundaries of your residence you can only break your fast after you have crossed your hadd tarakhus the boundary hadd tarakhus is the boundary of the city where we live in and we will come to that if somebody does because he's traveling i'm traveling my flight is at 10 o'clock in the morning so i have a beautiful breakfast in that case in i'm still at home and my flight is 10 o'clock in that case there is a kafara for it you can only break your fast if you are traveling before zohar after you leave after the tarakhus has been crossed you cannot do it before now what is hadd tarakhus now there is a de- definition that has been given of hadd tarakhus what is hadd tarakhus is hadd tarakhus means the final boundary of your city it generally it means um it is a boundary of a city or a village or whatever we may call a wait now as far as we are concerned here we all live in very large cities if i consider the cities that the municipal boundaries are for example sanford then is is going into lake mary uh at uh, the crossing had the tarakhus no it is not like that these large cities that are combined they are looked at as a metropolitan and the entire metropolitan is considered as one city for example for orlando if you look at wikipedia and put greater orlando all the day, uh, cities that are covered by greater orlando is there and for us for example kisimi uh, sanford orlando all are covered so we are all in one area there is neither any kasar salat when we are traveling within that nor is there uh, a breaking of the fast for example i go to kisimi uh, masjid for example the center there there is no problem there is no breaking of fast there is full salat there another example is new york according to aga uh, uh, sahlani he also says that when you have are in the five boroughs there are five boroughs uh, i am told in um, new york which is queens manhattan long island brooklyn bronx all these five boroughs as long as you are within those five boroughs it is considered as one city however large or however much you need to travel within it as long as you are within this five boroughs then that is your uh, city now for orlando for example what are our uh, boundaries when we go for example on i4 uh, east the bridge on uh, what is that river uh, st john's river that bridge would be is our you will see there is a boundary it says you are now leaving uh, this county and whatever that is our boundary for the north as for the south beyond kisimi there is a, a where you will see Uh, a board that says you are now leaving kisimi or leaving orlando whatever the board is may be saying that is our southern boundary similarly you have boundary wherever we go so that is how big this metro is and within that area there is no uh, kasar and there is you have to fast as long as you are within this area uh, if you if anybody wants Uh, details about these cities then i told you wikipedia if you put in greater orlando you will see uh, all the cities are mentioned there now can a traveler fast on the day he or she reaches his hometown after zohar if he has not done anything which breaks a fast the answer is a traveler reaches home 
his hometown after zohor or a place where he intends to stay for 10 days cannot fast on that day so if your flight for example in these days is landing in orlando at say 2 o'clock in the afternoon then that is after zohor you are entering your hometown after zohor and therefore that day's fast is not valid and you have to give qada but if you have not done anything on the other hand to break your fast and you land say at 1 o'clock then in that case that day because it is still not yet zawal it is still not yet time for zohor at the time of landing in orlando your fast is valid as long as you have not broken with anything that is against fasting and that day you do not have to give any qada if a traveler okay it's uh, that this we answered just now he should make a niyyah of fasting and abstain from any act that renders the fast uh, that day that is invalid he is therefore not required to give any qada now there are a couple of things here that have been uh, noted because of the many questions we get during uh, for travelers it says if a person travels after fajr and returns to his hometown before zohor of the same day his fast is still batil and he will have to give qada for example i decided i want to go to daytona for work or whatever it may be i am not a regular traveler and i want to go to daytona for example or had to go there doesn't matter as long as i leave after fajr time even if i come back before zohor time that day's fast is gone however if i leave before fajr enters and come back before zohor enters then that day i can fast because now i am traveling in before zohor but if i leave after fajr even if i come back before zohor that day's fast is gone detona yes yes uh, this bridge of st john's river is our boundary for us so that is uh, deltona Deltona's boundary uh, uh, th- that is the city yes but from there we have to calculate 14 miles one way <coughs> ji from the boundary 14 miles yes one way Can a person travel during the month of Ramadan for whatever reason? A very common question during summer times when we have to fast during summer. Yes, you can travel. There is no problem if for any reason. But it is makru to travel before the 24th of the month of Ramadan unless it is absolutely necessary or if uh, it is for hajj or umrah in that case the karahat is removed but otherwise yes you can travel there is no problem and uh, you will repair qada only for those days that you miss ji 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 only for traveling then how, uh, w- what is the question you, you have traveled okay yes 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 So for example you If I understand your question correctly let me let me rephrase Say I fasted for the first 14 days on on the 15th day I decided to travel uh, not for a necessity but I decided to travel in any ways 
so that is makru so that day becomes makru or those days that i am traveling becomes makru those that you have done before or we would do after also is fine I, there is no issue with that is that what your question uh, is bhaijan or am i not understanding your question No, it is only for that day only. Right. No, what the the question, the way I understand is, what happens to the days that I have already fasted? No, 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 no. 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 If you are fasting. Uh, does that answer your question, Bhaiya? Ji, ji. Umrah. I w- it's not mentioned here, but I would put it in the same category. Uh, I, g- generally speaking, but it is not mentioned here. Here, what is mentioned is Hajj and Umrah, meaning going for a pilgrimage uh, during Umrah. In fact, uh, I have seen many people do undertake uh, Umrah during Mah Ramadan uh, and fast in Makkah and Medina. Then you have to go and stay for this, those many days. But I would put ziyarat in the same category, though it is not mentioned. So I will not say as a firm answer, but it would be under the same category, yes. Because those are mustahab journeys, so there is no problem. A person does not know the fast of a traveler is invalid. We have discussed this in part. Someone returning from a trip arrived in his hometown after Zawal. I entered uh, Orlando after Zohar, so my fast for that day is not there. Does he have to observe Imsak for the rest of the day? What this means is, you know, there is one very important masala during Mah Ramadan, and that is that in, uh, we cannot, even if we are not fasting, for whatever reason, valid or invalid, eating and drinking is prohibited in certain cases. Certain cases it is recommended, uh, recommended in the sense that you it is not haram. However, in this case, is it wajib to do imsak or for the rest of the imsak means that keeping away from eating and drinking? The answer is although not wajib on, uh, because of that. That if I came in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, can I eat for that day now? My fast is not there as it is. It says, although not wajib, it is advisable for him to abstain from food and drink for the rest of the day. The same applies to him who arrived before Zawal and was not fasting because of travel. Now you see, when I'm, what it means here is that I came after Zohar, so my fast is not there. Can I eat and drink? It says it is not wajib to abstain. Though it is uh, something that is uh, recommended. It says advisable, not recommended. It says advisable. Similarly, I did not make a knee. I did my breakfast in New York and came in before Zohar. My flight did land before Zohar, but I did not begin or I rather I did not observe all the conditions of fasting and therefore my fast was not valid for that day fine fair enough I am not having any kafara for that day but the kada will remain and in that case also it is advisable that when you reach your hometown you do not uh, eat or drink for the rest of the day it is not wajib though suppose someone commutes daily to a place now this is something that is we what we need to understand there is someone who 
commutes daily to the place of where he works, studies or goes about his business. The place happens to be over 22 kilometers away from where he lives. From what form of prayer should he perform and does he have to fast? Now, for example, I am living in Orlando. My job is in Daytona. I go every day. Five days a week, four days a week, there is no problem. In that case, Daytona and here both ways, I have to full, we have full Salat and there is no Kasar and, the, and you can fast. There is no problem. The problem will come that he should offer, uh, should he be journeying irregularly? There is no regular pattern. Three days a week he travels to that place. Then what? Say, say three times a week in the year round, the whole year round, every week, three days he is traveling to that place. And the nature of business of the person concerned was not of that which involves travel. He is not known as Kasiru Safar as such. His profession is not traveling. Then what should he do? In that case, he should perform complete prayers. Now, the buzzword here or the main word here is three days a week. In that case, he should offer complete prayers and observe fast. There is no problem to that. If he were to travel two days a week, now this is where the, if it is once a week, then the question is out. It is kasar and it is no fasting. If it is three days and more, then it is full salat and fasting is allowed. But when it comes to two days, a week regularly, then in that case you have to offer full salat and kasar salat, you have to fast and give kada as well. Both. If your average is two days, so two days is the breaking point. Before, if it is one day a week, you are exempt on that day. You don't fast and you do not, uh, and you recite kasar. If it is three days, then you don't miss your fast and you pray full. But if it is two days, it says, then in that case, you will have to do both. Um, it says you can you offer both kasar and full prayers for every salat. And in the month of Ramadan, to do fasts in it and give kada after that as well. <laughs> So look for a job that is the three days and more. <laughs> now there are certain examples that we have here. Um, Ali, a resident of New York, goes to Orlando for vacation with the intention of staying there for ten full days. He prays full and also fast because it is the month of Ramadan. However, at night on fourth day, now, these are the general messiles where we would come about when Kasar stops or when Kasar begins and when is it full and these are the borderline. It says, on the fourth day, an emergency situation arises and he has to go back on the seventh day. He made a niyat of ten days, but then in between that, he, something came up and he has to go back before the ten days finish. Should he therefore continue I know I have two more days before I go. My flight or whatever is in such a way. So for those two days, do I say now, because I know that I'm leaving before my 10 days will be over. Do I recite full Salat or Kasar Salat? Do I fast on those two days or I do not fast on these two days? The answer is he will continue praying full and he will be able to fast. There is no problem when he changes his niyat from 10 days to less. And there is, whenever he changes the balance period that he has in that uh, city that he has traveled to, there is no problem. Uh, what about, uh, he, he did not decide to stay 10 days. So he was... He was just No, but then in the middle he said, okay, I'm extending my days. So I'm coming to this. The next question is this. It says, Jafar, or rather we say, Najaf Bai, resident of Orlando, goes to New York. To be there for seven days. He's, so he's praying Kasar and he's not fasting. Though to, uh, 
these day are the days of Ramadan. On the fifth day when he was there, he decided to stay for one week. So there is no fasting, there is Qasr Salat. On fifth day, he decided to stay in New York for seven more days. Again, he is making a niyat for seven more days. So it is five plus seven is twelve, although, but on the day he is making that niyat, he is making niyat of another seven days. From this point onward, does he pray full because now he will be there for 12 days? Or does he uh, st uh, and start fasting or does he pray kasar? The answer is, if he decides on that day to extend his trip by seven days, then he will continue praying kasar and will not fast. <coughs> up to a maximum of 30 days. On the 31st day, even if you are going to stay for one day or one part of the day, you will still do a full Salat. It, it, there is certain, in business, sometimes it happens that you have to extend a couple of days not knowing exactly. You went there for five days, then you extended by seven days, or in by another three days, in another five days, as long as you are not making a niyat of ten days, up to a total of thirty days from day one, you will recite kasar and you cannot fast. But the, the moment, say for example, now you know you are going to be ten days, then from that point onwards it will be full salat. Ji. No, you cannot. When it is wajibat of kasar, it has to be kasar. And for that matter, this question is very common, that if I have missed my salat when I was obligated to do kasar, and I'm now back home, how do I give kada? Kada is like a debt. Whatever you did not perform, you perform. Meaning, if your kada is for kasar, then it has to be kasar, even if you are in your hometown. So, for example, I went out and I could not recite my salat, which is which should not be done. But there is another matter, just because this question has come, I would like to clarify that I missed my salat. Now I'm back home, I want to repay my zohar and asar that I missed the day, which was kasar. So I repay kasar even if I am reciting at home. So kasar, uh, kada for kada, whatever has been missed will be repaid. If it is kasar, it is uh, kada is kasar. If it is full, it is full. I think we'll stop here and inshallah we will look at some more masais next week. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتوب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم. والحمد لله رب العالمين رحم الله من كرأ الفاتحة